Hi everyone, Mr. H here. This is part 2 of chapter 3.5 and 3.6, the ratio analysis figures. This is mostly based on 3.6, efficiency, efficiency ratio. Um, in the previous video, we explained profitability ratios, the calculations to get the gross profit margin and net profit margin out of the profit and loss accounts. And we also explained how to get the liquidity ratios, the current ratio and AC test ratio out of the balance sheet, out of balance sheet uh, figures. Now we're going to the last one, which is efficiency ratios. Uh, these ratios uh, assess or calculate how efficient the business is doing at using assets and liabilities, how efficient uh, the business is managing uh, or working with uh, their liabilities and using the assets to cover for liabilities and so on. So um, let's take a look at these. These are four. Um, by the way, only the first of these four uh, is for both standard level and higher level uh, groups of the IB program. The, uh, the last three uh, are specifically for higher level students. Let's see. Number one is, again, for standard and higher level, the return on capital employed or the ROSI. This uh, value is the percentage, okay, is, is to understand what percentage uh, of the profit generated by the business comes from the capital that has been invested, that has been employed. So you employ, you invest a capital, and you want to see uh, what percentage of the profit was generated from that capital. So uh, in order to know that, we use values from the two documents. We get the net profit before interest and tax from the profit and loss account, and we get the capital employed from the uh, balance sheet. Now, in the balance sheet, there's no uh, a capital employed as a separate uh, value, but you get it from uh, three specific figures in that document. So the capital employed is the addition of the long-term liabilities plus the share capital plus the retained profit. So you add these three. Remember, share capital and retained profit are part of the equity plus the long-term liabilities, and we're getting the capital employed, which is all the money that you have used to finance and um, um, get your, get your uh, put your business to work, right? I mean, you get the share capital, the money that uh, are all the investments from the owners, the retained profit, the accumulated retained profit from year to year from the business activity, and any additional long-term debt or mortgage that you uh, invested in in order to uh, put your business to work. These three are the capital employed. So from the balance sheet, you get these. You get this one from uh, the profit and loss account, net profit for interest and tax divided by capital employed times 100, and you get this percentage value of how much, uh, uh, what percentage of profit was generated from the capital that was invested. That's it. Um, how do we improve the, the ROCE? Well, uh, you can actually do the very same thing you did for the gross profit margin or the net profit margin, you know, uh, increase sales or reduce costs. By increasing sales or reducing costs, I mean, you are getting, you are getting a better net profit before interest and tax. Therefore, you are getting, you are getting a better ROCE, ROCE, and other two possibilities, other two possible tactics are reducing the loan capital. I mean, you reduce um, uh, your debt, your long-term liability, or um, but something you have to consider that you might actually need that extra money, that loan capital, that debt, and uh, you might not want to uh, get rid of it. But reducing it would be a way to improve the the rosy. Another way to improve it is to pay dividends uh, to reduce retained profit. I mean, as you get the profit and you pay the proper dividends to all the owners, uh, then the retained profit would be less, then uh, the ROC would be a better number. But remember that keeping the retained profit low every year by paying dividends and all that would actually mean that there would be less funds for any future investment. So that's something you would have to consider before uh, reducing uh, the retained profit by paying dividends. 
So those are two possible ways besides the, the others that we explained in the previous video for the cross profit margin and the net profit margin that will allow you to improve the ROC, the ROC, return on capital employed. The other very similar calculation on efficiency is the gearing ratio, which is a value, a percentage value that tells a value that tells us what percentage of the capital comes from the loan, from a debt, from loan capital. Okay, as I said before, the capital employed is made up of three elements: a loan capital, a big debt, a long-term debt for money to invest into your business to put the business to work. But you also have the share capital, the money invested by um, by the owners, and the retained profit, the accumulated profit from every year's activity. But uh, sometimes we want to know how well we're doing by checking on how much of that capital employed comes from the debt. So looking at the gearing ratio, you calculate it by divided the loan capital by uh, the capital employed. Loan capital divided by capital employed, again, same figure than the previous one, times 100, and then you get a percentage of how much of the capital employed is a loan capital. Um, ways to improve it? Well, if you don't want loan capital to be a problem, to be such a big percentage of your capital employed, find alternative sources of finance. I mean, instead of getting a long-term uh, bank loan or a long-term mortgage, uh, get some other finance, uh, financial sources like selling of assets, uh, like uh, subsidies or any other uh, permanent sources of finance that you wouldn't have to uh, pay back on a regular basis and with an interest uh, adding, adding to it. Uh, but there is a downside there. Usually these other alternative sources of finance might take a longer time to get and every single source of finance have their own risks and limitations that must be considered. So it's not as easy as just not going to a bank and ask for money and finding other sources. You have to take care of the time you're going to invest on finding those other alternative sources. And you also have to consider the risks and limitations of each of those sources before changing from loan capital. Loan capital is usually faster to get even though you are then um, trapped by the bank and have to pay every month with a higher interest, with, a, with an additional interest, but still is a faster or usually a fast way to get uh, finance for your business. So, well, there's a, there's, a, there's one solution, find an alternative source. Another possible solution would be reducing or keeping the dividends uh, to increase your retain profit. I mean, you can, you can decide as a business, as the owners, not to get all the dividends from the uh, from the accounting year or to reduce the, the, the percentage of dividends you are getting uh, that year and in that way you would increase retained profit by increasing retained profit you are increasing the capital employed versus the loan capital then the gearing rate would look better but still shareholders might not like the idea of uh, having their dividends reduced or just giving them away that year. So that's something that might cause some issues with the shareholders too. Things to consider when you want to improve the gearing ratio value. Okay, these are the first two. Now we have uh, the last two efficiency ratios to remember. Uh, number three is the stock turnover ratio. It's a, it's a figure that shows how speed, uh, at, at what speed uh, the business can sell and replace the stock during the accounting year, during this specific time period. And uh, we can show this in two forms. We can show it in the number of times the, the stock moves uh, along the year or the number of days that have to be, that, that to pass, that are spent uh, before the stock is sold and then replaced. Uh, there are two specific formulae. Number one, to get the times, how many times the, the the stock is sold and replaced? Well, you divide the cost of goods sold from the profit and loss account against the, the average stock. We're going to talk about this figure in, in a minute. Or if you want to know in how many days uh, the stock is sold and replaced in the, pre the specific period, 
uh, you divide the average stock by the cost of goods sold again times 365 days and you get the number of days so the times the stock is uh, replaced and sold sold and replaced in the year in the accounting year or the number of days in the same accounting year um, the average of stock uh, you get this number from the opening stock I mean how much in money you had when the year started plus the closing stock how much you uh, keep in stock at the end of the accounting year the closing stock is basically the stock by the end of the of the, of the operations which is shown in the balance sheet and the opening stock comes from the previous balance sheet where you get the previous stock so you can use those figures also uh, the cash flow uh, statement also shows you those those well as you can tell what was the opening stock at the beginning and the closing stock at the end of the accounting year you add them divide them by divide them by two and then you get the average stock to get these calculations how do we uh, increase the times uh, of cost of goods sold or uh, decrease the days uh, of, of the stock i mean the idea is like they, they, they the theoretical idea, the theoretical goal is not to keep stock too long in uh, in your business. You have to sell them. You want to sell them. So what do we do? There are four possibilities. One is disposing of obsolete or slowing moving goods. I mean, those products that you are not selling that much or they are just obsolete, you just get, get, uh, get, I mean, get away with them, you dispose of them. Uh, obviously, this represents a financial loss losing money by just disposing of those goods you can reduce the range of products if you had a too wide range of products and a few of them are not really selling you just reduce the production and reduce the the, the range of products even though this means less variety as a, as a, as a drawback still uh, is a good decision keep stock level low is a very wise choice just keep the, the number of products at uh, in stock uh, low uh, even though this might mean that you might be facing pro trouble if there's a sudden higher demand at, at some point, but still keeping the, the, the stock low is a very wise move. The just-in-time production method by just buying the material you need exactly for your production and not buying anything le anything more is also a very wise way to keep a low stock. But uh, remember that if there's in, any sudden demand, higher demand, there will be delays in getting the products right away to produce the, the extra. So that's something to consider. And finally, the last uh, figure is the debtor days and creditor days. This is the average days the business spends to collect money from debtors or to pay money to creditors. And you also use values from the balance sheet, the debtors and the creditors. And from the profit and loss account, you get the total sales revenue and the cost of goods sold. In the two cases, times 365. And you get... How many days you're spending to pay uh, the days in average? To, uh, how many days you're to pay the debtors in average? How many days you're spending to pay the creditors in average? Two in that accounting year. So uh, these are two important uh, um, efficiency ratios to tell how well you're doing in getting money from debtors and paying to creditors. How do we improve that? Well, in terms of debtors, you can give discounts or incentives uh, to have them pay you. Uh, uh, sooner but remember if you're getting if you're uh, offering discounts you are getting less revenue you can also impose penalties or fines or stop trading with the debtors when they are not paying or take legal action even but remember this also might affect customer relationships so you gotta, gotta be careful if you decide very careful if you wanna if you wanna if you decide to use any of these uh, choices in the case of creditors well you can negotiate with your trade credits and ask your creditor to extend the, the period to pay back. But you must be careful not to abuse of these negotiations uh, every so often because it, it would affect your relationship with them. You can, you actually should better develop effective credit control. I mean, be very careful how much money you're spending and how much you are taking on credit, not to take it too often, not to take it too much. And then that that's you can actually improve the days of uh, the credit days, the greater days ratio. And this is it. This is these are all the four efficiency ratios that I wanted to share with you. Remember, the first is for both levels. The last three for higher level. So uh, this is it. That's it for the chapter 3.5 and 3.6. Bye bye.